Hey guys, welcome back. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create this um, shockwave attack. As you can see, when the player gets hit by one of the outer rings, um, he changes his color from gray to red. And once he's safely within the inner circle here, this larger ring, um, he goes back to being the gray color. Um, the player can also jump over these rings so that he can avoid the attack. I can show you here like this. And you see he doesn't turn red if I time it properly. All right. So I'm going to show you guys how to create that. First thing we're going to need to do is create an actor. So we'll right click here and go to Blueprint Class. We'll create an actor and we'll call this our Shockwave. And as you guys can see here, I have this mesh ring two. So I made this in Blender and it has a custom collision so that the player can actually be on the inside of this mesh without getting um, an overlap event triggered. You see the green outline of the collision area just goes around the mesh itself here. Um, I'm going to upload this ring for you guys, so if you want to use this um, during the tutorial, you can do that, or you can make your own in Blender if you know how to create these custom collisions. All right. So we'll open up our shockwave here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of um, static meshes. We'll call this the outer ring. And then we'll add another one. We don't want it parented here. And we'll call this the inner ring. Now for our outer ring, I'm going to give it a scale of 5 by 5 by 5. And our inner ring will leave at 1 by 1. And I'll make the height of this like 100, because I want to be sure that if the player does get hit by the outer ring, they will get hit by the inner ring, even if they mistimed their jump and they were in the air. So I don't want them to be able to accidentally jump over the inner ring here, and that's why I'm making it so tall. Um, obviously, you guys don't have to have that... Um, visualized in the game you can have a nice particle effect for it and just use the mesh for the overlap events but that's why I'm making the inner ring um, have a Z value of a hundred okay so now that we have that set up or sorry let me put in these meshes so look for ring 2 and again ring 2 here so if you go to the viewport you'll see this is the basic setup. The outer ring, where the player can jump over this, and then the very tall inner ring that the player won't be able to jump over. So what we're going to do is, off of the begin play event, we want to set a timer. And this is what's going to cause our rings to um, grow. So we'll change the radius with this timer. So call it a custom event. Just call this explosion. We'll make it looping, and we'll say the time is every five hundredths of a second. You want something small so that your rings increase um, gradually, and they hit a lot of the different markers. Because if you have it growing too large, um, the mesh actually won't sweep over your player, and you'll get these weird bugs where if he's standing in certain areas he won't actually be affected by the mesh if it grows beyond where he was standing before from um, one firing of this timer to the next one. So you want to keep the time pretty small and you want to keep the rate of expansion also pretty small. So after we have that, we're going to have a delay. And this is however long you want the blast radius to emanate for you know two seconds, three seconds, whatever. So we'll just say we'll have this go for two seconds. And then we will destroy the actor. And off of this custom event, what we're going to do is get our inner ring. And we're going to get our outer ring here. And we're going to say get world scale. We can control C, control V. So we'll need that for the outer ring as well. And then we're going to break this vector. Because I don't really need to scale it in the z direction, only the x and y direction here. 
and we'll do the same thing for this one. Break the vector. And we're just going to use this x here. And we'll say add float. And then we're going to make a vector. And just because I'm being lazy, you can attach this directly to the y because this is a perfect circle. So x and y are going to be the exact same values. And from this one, we're going to do minus float. And we're going to make sure the x is plugged into the bottom. So we can break this. And here we're going to multiply this vector by a float. And this is how much the outer ring or the rings are going to increase in scale. So we'll set this to something small like 1.05. So it'll increase by 5% each time we run through this um, timer here. And then we're going to take this vector and we're going to break it. And we're going to take the x value here and plug it into this. And then we're going to take this and plug it in here. The z value can be the same here. And then we're going to take this x value and we're going to make a vector. And again, the x and the y can be the same. But the z we're going to want to get from the original world scale before it um, was multiplied here. So we don't want it to change. And then we're going to set the world scale of these things. So say set world scale. Say control C, control V. And we'll hook these up like this. And this one will go into the outer ring. And you can connect these two. And connect this. So now we have a timer that's going to run through and scale up our inner ring and our outer ring by the same um, value here of this float. This way you don't get your rings that are expanding at um, different sizes based on this percentage because remember the inner ring is always going to be smaller than the outer ring and if you keep taking a percentage eventually the distance between these two becomes larger and larger. So we'll compile and save. Then I'm just going to go here into this shockwave spawner. This is just another actor that I created that's going to spawn the um, shockwave just for testing purposes. Um, you guys can have this as part of your attacks or wherever you want the shockwave to emanate from. You would put um, this, you would spawn it from that blueprint. So we'll look for shockwave here. Compile and save. And this little red ball right here is the shockwave spawner. So this is where all of our shockwaves are going to start from. And now if we hit play, wait a couple seconds, and you guys can see that the shockwave is coming out. Don't know if I... Oh, I think I need to fix the collision on these things. Yes. So we want it to say overlap all dynamic for both of these rings. And just to make it look like what I had in the beginning, we can say give this each a color. that and to change the players um, color obviously this is where you would do the damage or whatever you guys want to happen when the player overlaps one of these shock waves so I just had an overlap event here that changed the players color so we'll take the inner ring and the outer ring and we'll cast to our third person And then when we overlap the outer ring, say get the mesh. And set the material. And we'll just make this 
a red color. And then when we overlap the inner ring, we'll take the same mesh and we'll set the material back to, I think, body, this one. I think that's it. So now if we minimize, we hit play. And you see our player is turning red when he overlaps the first ring. But if we jump, you see we're able to avoid the shock. Now one thing that I noticed, um, because this shock wave is literally just a plain mesh, so it's super thin, um, if you want your player to actually be damaged say if he jumps and he lands within this space still then a solution a workaround that I found for that is just to add more rings so right here instead of having just one outer ring if you control C control V and you just make a few more make them a little bit smaller like that oops So you can have these intermediate rings here and that'll help if your player jumps into this circle and he misses the first ring but he's still within this area of the blast radius, he'll get hit by one of the other rings. And you can just set up the same events, whatever you want to do to damage the player and that should work just fine. Alright guys, I hope you thought that was helpful and if you did don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more tutorials. Alright, see you guys later.